Um, good morning, everyone, to those of you in the room and those of you joining us uh, virtually. Uh, can I start by saying how fantastic it is to be back at Digital DNA? Um, it has always been one of my favorite events of the year, and so it's really special to be back in St. George's Market, and particularly special because I was reflecting this morning that uh, I think I get a, a, a gold badge from, from Simon and the team because been able to make it now to every single digital DNA since it was started in 2013 and it's great to see uh, this event go from strength to strength and so many great companies on, on show this morning. The New York Times recently uh, wrote a, a very poignant article in which they talked about the new BC and AC, the before corona and the after corona. And in a, in a way, as we come here this morning, we are emerging into the after-corona age. And so it's fitting that we are looking at how data is redefining not just the legal landscape, but indeed our world. And one thing is clear from, from the, the year and a half we've all endured on Zooms and learning how to adopt to the new age of technology. The future is data-driven. And of course, that has implications on all sectors, on all industries, and none more so than the legal sector, which of course produces enormous amounts of data every year. And the, the challenge, of course, in the legal sector is that it is a traditional sector. Uh, there are concepts of justice. And it is going to be that interplay between traditional notions of justice, how lawyers perform their tasks, what clients expect, and the, the role of big data and how they interplay with each other that we want to explore this morning. Now, I don't want to give Glenn a heart attack on stage, but Deloitte recently published a report stating that they, they estimate that over 114,000 legal jobs will be uh, automated um, over the next decade. But the good news, Glenn, is that as that automation process uh, continues, new opportunities will emerge, and it's very much going to be in the realm of those who are the data trailblazers. Um, and who would have thought just five years ago if we talked about areas of law, including cryptocurrency um, and, uh, and, and many other emerging areas of law. So today, we're going to uh, explore, I suppose, two main themes. The first is how data is redefining the legal sector. And secondly, how these two trailblazing companies that I'm joined with on stage, Analytics Engines and Mill Selleck, are benefiting and maximizing opportunities from this disruption. So as Andy said, I'm joined on stage to my left by Glenn uh, Watterson, partner and corporate lawyer at Mill Selleck, and to my right by uh, Dr. Alistair McKinley, the CTO at Analytics Engine. So thank you both for joining me on stage here. Glenn got the sofa, and me and Alistair got relegated to the, the spinning chairs. Um, but to kick off the conversation the, the, this morning, I suppose we should start by having having a look at how data is uh, disrupting and redefining the legal landscape. So, Alistair, I suppose, you know, to just get us started, um, you know, what, what, why is data important? Why is analytics important to the legal sector, to law firms? Um, and, you know, why is it that, that law firms need to start thinking about data analytics? Thanks very much, Connor. So, I think the the key reason that it has become so um, significant recently is because of the um, capabilities of text analytics, machine learning, and artificial intelligence. They have really um, massively improved in the last few years in um, the, uh, the research and the application of these technologies and the capabilities of the technologies has moved on so much that it is now um, becoming possible to analyze in new ways large amounts of text data that um, typically has to be um, analyzed for uh, in the legal profession. So in the past, um, the, the capabilities for text analytics were more basic. Technologies like keyword search, for example, allowed people to drill into large amounts of text documents to find relevant information that they may be looking for as part of a due diligence or an investigation or an analysis of contracts, but um, that was somewhat limited. So those old technologies, like uh, simple types of keyword search, mean that we have to be precise about what we're looking for in order to find the, the data from the text. And 
machine learning, um, artificial intelligence, and specifically deep learning have enabled new capabilities in this space that mean analyzing text data um, is possible in a way that wasn't before. We can look at the semantic meaning of text. We can look at the similarity of text, wh whether those contain the same words or not. And that provides just additional capabilities when you're handling large amounts of data that is impossible to review in c completely without large teams of people. So the, adv the advances in the technology really, I think, mean that without adopting these, people are going to be left behind. The, you know, there are new capabilities, and the legal tech um, industry has really flourished to, to exploit these to deliver value in the legal sector. Yeah, thanks, Alistair. Um, you know, as as someone who is a, a recovering lawyer, I remember when I was training, using those those very search engines that you would put in a keyword, and it would bring up perhaps the cases relevant to that or, or the text relevant to that. But what you're saying is that was a very basic form, but things are advancing, and in fact, you can now review whole decisions, whole 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 reams of text, um, whole cases could be analysed using this technology, which is a completely different uh, level. And I suppose, Glenn. You've gone from uh, apprentice to now being a, a director within Mill Selig over the last decade, and I'm sure you have seen big changes to uh, both your firm um, in that time and also the legal profession. I remember in my law firm uh, having to persuade my boss that we should get email about 20 years ago, so it's amazing how far we have, have come uh, as a profession. But perhaps you could just talk a little bit about how you've seen those changes both within your firm and within in practice more generally. Thanks, Connor. Um, I suppose looking back uh, at, at the people that are lawyers and, and the, the profession that I'm in, it's, it's a very conservative profession. Um, flamboyant, uh, outgoing people maybe don't want to be lawyers and go to university and, and read about case law that's 100 years old and, and statutes that have been around for, for 50 or 60 years, so, apart from yourself, obviously, as a lawyer. Um, we we we're traditionally you know, coming in as, as lawyers. We're we're focused on the input. The, the economics of a law firm are hourly rates, slug away, create the create the billable hours and your billing clients. It's not really focused on the output, which is something that we've seen the technology, especially the technology that analytics engines have have developed and we've been using. Um, that's very much focused on the output. Uh, that's probably why I think we're very slow as a, as a profession picking up technology and using data analytics and using, using big data and adopting these things. Um, since I've been a, a lawyer, you know, things like this were only really beginning to be talked about 13, 14 years ago. We've seen big changes in terms of the types of technology that are out there from uh, case law libraries, statute libraries, um, practice management software, things like that that have, have improved the operational side of the business. But it's only in the last sort of couple of years where, you know, obviously data analytics, big data has really become a, a key theme in, in, in the market, especially as a technology lawyer. And we like to think as, as a firm how we can be on, on the front foot and be sort of one of these sort of early adopters getting into these technologies and using them to improve that output because we realize that it's not all about the input. The, the, the clients expect uh, efficient processes. They want, especially since, since I suppose, BC as you call it, uh, sorry, AC after coronavirus, um, everybody wants things much quicker. And if there's, if there's data tools there that help us do that, we're, we're more than willing to, to use them and, and uh, adopt and adapt really. And I think that's really important because like, you're talking about the issue there of culture, which is a, a big thing to change in an organization, never mind in a centuries old uh, or millennia old uh, profession. Um, you know, so, and, and of course, you would be, uh, as a corporate lawyer, you have an expertise in actually advising many of the tech firms that are both showcasing here and, of course, across Northern Ireland. So you're obviously having to adapt to the changing needs of these kind of firms and the kind of clients you're representing. Um, maybe just get, could you give an example of some of the sort of clients you're working with at the moment and the kind of issues you're looking at? Yeah, so predominantly uh, on the technology side, I'd be dealing with clients who are entering into you know, licensing arrangements for software, um, 
I, I'm, I'm a corporate lawyer by trade, as it, as it says on the card. Um, I do a lot of acquisitions for companies, uh, and I've seen a couple of them here today that are they're buying businesses. They're in the technology sphere. So, you know, what we're doing, and one of the main things we'd be doing is, you know, we're running due diligence on, on the target company when we're acquiring. And it, it's the Minerva platform, it's the things analytics engines have been, been creating that are going to help us do that better because we're able to go through, you know, structures and, you know, potential areas of weakness or potential areas of risk for, for a buyer. So that that's that's sort of part of my day-to-day -day business and, and how the data, data analysis is going to help that. It's, that. it's that holistic piece, isn't it, in terms of being able to give what we call the 360 advice in what you're doing for the, the startup because there's multiple things they're trying to deal with whilst also ensuring it's a data-driven solution. So um, thanks for that, Glenn. And maybe just to come back to you then, Alistair, in terms of um, managing disruption and seeing these changes as you've identified in terms of particularly the legal sector, just thinking about analytics engines recently were named one of the UK's um, leading startups in the Tech Nation Applied AI 3.0 program, so congratulations on that. Um, but so analytics engines are obviously very much at the, the cutting edge of this and seeing the, 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 the changes that are coming and trying to help firms like Mill Selleck to, to adapt. You, what, what, are you, what are you as a company doing? What are you looking at in terms of trying to help um, manage this disruption for sectors like the, the, the legal sector? Okay, so there's a couple of points probably to make about this, uh, about the types of work that we do. Um, we work across multiple sectors, not just the legal sector, um, delivering data analytics solutions, and also, as Glenn mentioned, the, um, the product capabilities of our new Minerva platform. Um, so across different domains, we see different challenges. We're typically applying the, the core data analytics technology in different areas, whether that is business intelligence, um, which uh, is a more old school kind of da data analytics, uh, understanding your data at scale, um, what are the patterns and trends in it, outlier analysis, anomaly detection, text analytics, which is obviously very applicable inside the legal sector to um, searching and understanding the unstructured data that uh, you may have as part of um, your business problem. Um, and also um, key to the Minerva, platform itself is the concept of using knowledge graphs to deliver additional insights into highly connected data sets. Um, so across, those are the kind of main areas that we're working in. It's um, anomaly detection, outlier detection, text analysis, business intelligence, knowledge graph creation, and knowledge graph analysis. So that, that's the, the, the areas. I think because we're working across a number of sectors, we, we see a lot of common challenges. And one of those is um, we have subject matter experts in different domains who understand the business needs very well. And we have technologists who understand how technology can be used to achieve um, some sort of uh, data insights or value. And the, one of the very important concepts is, is marrying those people together when building these kind of solutions and working on these kind of, this kind of innovation. It's collaboration between subject matter experts and technologists. That um, th there, can, there can be difficulties, and confusions, and misunderstandings and um, about what is required or what is possible. And um, being able to uh, have the subject matter experts and technologists interact closely when working on these kinds of solutions is really important, and that's why we're working so closely with Mill Selig on the um, the requirements for the, to solve their business challenges um, with adopting our Minerva platform. Thanks, Alistair. I think there's two things that you've said there to pick up on. One is the need then for firms like Glens to become, I suppose, culturally data driven, and and for you, um, Glenn, that data driven approach. Um, is, is opposed twofold. One is in terms of your internal, in terms of the firm of Millsellic, because often forgotten by people is that uh, companies like Millsellic are actually a company themselves, a business um, with challenges internally in terms of talent and, as you put it, the, the model of billable hours, but also then externally to, to, to the clients. So uh, really, I suppose it's that focus on being data driven and allowing the data to drive um, results both internally and in terms of the advice you give your client. Would that be a fair way of, of putting the challenge? 
Yeah, that's that's correct, Connor. We're we're very proud of the staff we have in Milselig. Um, we have a lot of guys who have come through from from students and trainees, and, and we're always looking to, I suppose, nurture the talent that they have and different systems that we can adopt that help them do their job better and make them better lawyers is is just brilliant for us and ticks all our boxes. In, in terms of the external approach, it's it's very important too because doing a lot in the, in the technology and the information technology sector, it, it's important for me to be giving the best results for, for clients, doing things as efficiently as possible and just, I suppose, making our services uh, as good as they can be for, for clients. Yeah, thanks, Glenn. And the, the, the second point which, which Alistair raised, which I think is why we're actually on this stage today, is, is the, the concept of collaboration. And uh, in a way, the conversation we're having, but the relationship that is developing between Mill Salik and Analytics Engines is, if you like, an excellent example, a real life example of how collaboration works. You are the legal experts, you have clients, you understand the issues your clients are facing, you understand how law works and, 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 and how practice works. Uh, but, you know, here we have a, a guru who, who thinks in data. Uh, you know, I'd love to see inside your mind, Prabhu Alistair, in terms of the way it works. Um, and, and it's really then marrying together those two perspectives. So I, I imagine, uh, Alistair, a lot of the, 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 the role and the challenge is uh, to make sure that Glenn is asking the right question. If you, you understand how to interrogate, analyze, create platforms for, for data analytics, um, but you obviously need then that expertise to know what to, to go looking for, what to find. And I suppose that brings us in nicely to A, the, why you're collaborating with Mill Selig, and B, one of the solutions, that, the Minerva platform. Maybe you can just talk a little bit about that. Yes, so um, as, as you mentioned, you know, Collaboration is key because of uh, the difficulties in communication across boundaries of technologists and subject matter experts. Um, so that is, uh, yeah, that's the reason why we're we're working so closely, and I think that's the the way to make this kind of innovation a success. Um, technologists have a habit of, um, and I count myself in this, <laughs> unfortunately, of a habit of uh, building things that solve imaginary problems sometimes. <laughs> And really and ensuring that we have that sort of uh, relationship with subject matter experts and the business challenges really close to heart when working on technology solutions is, is really important. So Minerva is the, the platform um, that we've developed, the data platform that we're um, working with Mil Selig as, a, as an early adopter of the platform. And Minerva is um, a, uh, an, a platform for analyzing disparate data sets at its core. Fundamentally, it is, allows us to integrate different kinds of data with, from different formats, um, from of different structures, from different sources, whether they're public sources, private sources, internal sources, um, and build these into a knowledge graph of information that can be analyzed to gain deeper insights into the, uh, the data that we're um, interested in. And there's specific examples here, which I'll talk about in a minute, that illustrate that concept. Um, but holistically, it's about the challenges of data interoperability, data differences in standards across data sets, data silos, which limit the capability of really deep analysis. And it often causes a lot of manual intervention to be required when um, working in, whether it's, you know, the sort of, there's a cr quite a lot of crossover here in the, the um, world of like K KYC, uh, enhanced due diligence, um, AML, some, um, the, but there's a lot of crossover in, in that sector. And a lot of this work is currently done across silos in a manual fashion. And with Minerva, what we're attempting to do is build a platform that can integrate these sources automatically, can link them automatically, and allow that visualization and that search and deep interrogation of that data automatically or with a very friendly user interface to quickly deliver those insights to the, um, the analysts who are working on the problems. So on, on, on the slide here, we have um, an example of a knowledge graph um, output. And this is actually, this has been anonymized in terms of that's why we have generic labels on these, node, but, on these nodes. But what this is is part of a knowledge graph. Um, 
This is a screenshot from uh, the web interface of the Minerva platform. Um, and what we have here is uh, company information from Companies House. We have um, MP benefits information from uh, statutory UK sources and also um, contract awards from UK, other UK statutory sources. And what, what, what we've done is we've ingested this data in bulk. We've linked it together into a knowledge graph automatically using uh, the Minerva platform. And this might be, um, although this is anonymized, this, was, this uh, pattern is uncovered via search. Just basically to illustrate that there is a company here who's been awarded a public contract um, who's, uh, where an, an, an MP has also been a benefit of uh, um, something from that company. So this might be a kind of pattern that we're looking for inside a data set that might be interesting for an investigation, a specific investigation, or um, a pattern that we're looking for in general. And as we are integrating more, more data, we can have these kind of patterns automatically flagged to the users of the platform. So this slide is basically um, a, a basic instance of a, a pattern search. This is a slightly more complex view where we've gone up a level in the knowledge graph and we can see some of the other connected information. We can see that uh, this company, which is actually a company called Topwood, um, and the, uh, this was highlighted in the media last year about the possible um, conflicts in, in the operation, but um, this is, the, uh, this is the, the wider knowledge graph here that shows connected information about companies house, persons of significant control, officers, um, and other contracts that have been awarded to that company. So the knowledge graphs allows us to drill down and find specific patterns. It also allows us to come up and visualize a lot of this connected data. And the Minerva platform basically creates um, and visualizes these, these knowledge graphs automatically from the disparate data sources. So um, this is another example, just to quickly uh, illustrate how this can be used in other sectors. So um, the or for other examples. Uh, you can see the badge on this middle node here, although we've, we've removed the specific company details here. Um, the, the badge on this middle company essentially says that there are 393 other records connected to that. And if we expand out, we can see that there's a huge amount of data that has been connected by the Minerva platform. And to this obviously requires some expert in the loop review. Um, but what uh, what we've done here is bring this this absolute massive information to the person doing this kind of um, investigation automatically that would have been extraordinarily tedious to to actually obtain manually. I think you know there there is an element of for, for all of data analytics for all of augmented intelligence plat solutions there is um, an element of expert in the loop always required. Um, we're, we're augmenting the, the team, the, the human team, and you can, as you can see from that kind of um, visualization, there's still a lot of work to do after you've collected that data, after you've linked it, um, and that's where I think that you know, one of the important connections with the business is how do the platforms augment the team, yes. not necessarily replace their work. Yes, and I think that's what it is. That's, again, an example of the sort of complementarity and collaboration at play. I mean, so thank you, Alistair, for showing us the platform. And I think, for me, this is about being able to take both internal data, like like a firm like Mill Sally would have, and link it with um, external public, uh, publicly available data and instantaneously almost be able to show you um, and map and analyze what's going on. And you know, I was looking at that first one, Glenn, and I remember doing the due, due, due diligence checks in a firm that could take days, weeks, particularly if you had a complex uh, litigation or a complex, uh, when you were maybe buying a company and you wanted to look into the, the affairs of the company you're buying, that can take weeks, months, and suddenly you're able to bring that to life in, 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 in that way almost instantaneously. As you say, it's then working with the team at Mill Selig to be able to help them to understand what it is that they're actually seeing and to navigate that. So, I mean, Glenn, you know, you guys have obviously been early adopters in, in working with Analytics Engines and the Minerva platform on this. Um, you, do you, you, you're already seeing the benefits that this technology could bring, bring in terms of understanding both your own firm and what's happening and the data with the, that you hold within the firm, but also I imagine in terms of uh, future work streams, um, 
particularly thinking of you know, the, the due diligence that will be required in uh, a merger and acquisition, for example? Yeah, that, that, that's right, Connor. We, as Alistair said, we're, we're early adopters of the, of the Minerva platform. Uh, Alistair's team, Jeff and, and Martin and, and the guys were, were, were brilliant in terms of just investigating you know, what, what do we need, what is going to drive our business, make our business more efficient uh, and better. Um, th there's, I suppose, an internal and an external function with that because, uh, as, as you both mentioned, uh, anti-money laundering, you know, know your clients sort of stuff, that's, that's good, that helps operations, that helps us move more, more efficiently internally. There's probably, we haven't got that far yet, but there's probably a marketing function with this too, you know, connected companies and all of this so that we can, we can improve our footprint. And then externally for sort of client delivery of, of, of services, it's just streamlined our due diligence process to, to no end. Um, be that corporate where you're trying to find, you know, who are the directors of the company, who are the linked companies, what do we need to be careful of as, as legal advisors when we're advising on the transaction? Our, our property team, that they're able to find out, you know, link planning permissions, all sorts of, of different um, data sets are all brought together. And, and I suppose one thing it says is as lawyers, we're only really touching the, the surface of this platform, I think. Um, the capabilities seem to be endless. Um, but certainly, as, as we're very proud to be early adopters and get into this and, and really show ourselves as, as technology lawyers too, that we can work with the technology companies and, and understand what drives them. And, and it, it's, it's certainly helped us in the day to day and, and, and going forward. That's brilliant, Glenn, thank you. Um, look, I think time is, is almost against us here. I've been just keeping an eye. Um, and I think Andy is, is, is telling me to, we have to get on to the next session. But um, look, this has been a really fantastic conversation this morning and and what's exciting about it is i feel like we're at the very beginning of a conversation rather than at the end of one um, and hopefully we will be back next year at digital dna to hear about how the adoption of that platform and your ongoing collaboration has actually been integrated and changing the culture both internally and externally in terms of the client device and work um, but i think it's a great example of where the future is, particularly within the legal sector, where you have this collaboration between a leading commercial law firm and um, you know a, a leading analytics uh, um, firm as well to understand the, the, the data. So it's been a really interesting conversation, really exciting to see where this collaboration takes you, not just in terms of the platform, but what you will learn from each other and what, what else will come from it. Um, thank you to everybody who is has joined this session, uh, first session of day two uh, here at Digital DNA this morning, and also to everybody joining us online, and I hope you enjoy the rest of your day. So just to thank uh, Glenn and Alistair uh, for being with me this morning. Morning and thanks Andy for, for having us.